were How you all doing? That was a Hi, long sir. meeting. Were you sure, able to convince enough people? Look, I didn't go to convince. I went to explain and lay out exactly how we got to where we were and why this is so important for the country. My career up here, after 36 years, I never ask another person to vote against what they think they're interested in. I am confident. My sense, I was treated well. My sense is that they expressed, they expressed all their frustration, which I'd be frustrated if I was sitting there as well, uh, that, that, we're, that we came, were taken down to the wire like this. And so what they want to know is, uh, they ask questions specifically about the proposed legislation. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, the proposed legislation. I thought it was a good meeting, um, and uh, and I, I feel confident that uh, that uh, this will pass. There are a great deal of progressives who think that you, they, that that they've been sold down the river. That sure. There will not be jobs sure. created in this plan. Uh, If we had our way, and we there was a different circumstance in the Congress, we would be talking and should be talking right now about job creation initiatives. We should be talking about infrastructure. We should be talking about investment in education. We should be talking right now about investment in innovation. The President made that clear in his State of the Union message. But the truth of the matter is, there are sort of assorted Damocles hanging over everyone's head. This is the debt limit. And it was, I don't want to use pejorative terms, it was used as the means by which, unless certain compromises were made, we would default on our debt. Now, the reason why it's so important that, the, that this bargain that has been negotiated with the Republicans by the President, the reason why it's so important that it pass it has one overwhelming redeeming feature. It says that this debt limit issue cannot come up again until 2013. Now, the reason for that has nothing to do with elections. It has to do with now, from the moment this passes, if it passes, and is signed into law, we will be talking about nothing from then but about jobs. But if I had stood before all of you uh, two weeks ago, and I said, I have a job plan on the half of the administration. Would any of you have written about it? None of you would have said, you would have said, oh, 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 oh. no. What about, well, legitimately, what about the debt ceiling? What, what about the community? And so we have to get this out of the way to get to the issue of growing the economy. And the other thing that we did done here is that this bargain does not prevent us from being able to continue to fund those initiatives within our budget that are the job creators, infrastructure, innovation, and education. Now, and the normal processes will now go forward in terms of the, the appropriations committees and the debates within the Congress, within the House and Senate, as to whether or not we can win those debates and convince people that our initiatives should be passed. There's what they, I, I, I've been dealing with economists and budgeteers for so long, I was about to use the word headroom. There is room within the budget, there's room within the budget to fund those priorities. But it's going to be, a, you know, would it ordinarily be a normal political battle rather than sitting there and saying, by the way, if you don't do this, we're going to let the economy, def the, the United States default. We're going to see interest rates climb five or more percent. We're likely to head to a double dip recession. That now is behind us if this passes. Thank, Thank you guys. all very much. Thank you.